our voice to you this morning. Glory. We sing praise to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Another day that the Lord, glory, has kept me. Oh, yeah. Woo. Another day that the Lord, oh, has kept me. Oh, yeah. Oh, he has kept me from all evil. With my mind stayed on Jesus. Oh, another day. Oh, that the Lord has kept me. you will do in this house, oh God. We thank you, oh God, what you will do in the lives of your people, oh God. So we need you right now, oh God. We need you like never before, Lord God. Have your way, God, and touch our minds, oh God. Help us to think the way you desire to think. Help us to move, oh God, in the spirit of the Lord, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we submit ourselves to you. Hallelujah. And we bless you, oh God. We bless your name. Come on and clap your hand and give God praise. In your home, hallelujah. On your job, give him praise. For he alone is worthy. You alone are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory and honor. And God, it all belongs to you, Lord. We're not looking at our circumstance, oh God. But, oh, God, we are giving you glory this morning. God, for you are yet alive and well. Hallelujah. And we thank you, oh, God, for your visitation, oh, God. We thank you for your visitation this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh, God. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. He admonish us to rejoice. Come on, let me rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah, we bring you greetings. Hallelujah from Faith Pentecostal Tabernacle. We thank you again for joining us this morning. Hallelujah, glory be to God. We thank you for the presence of God. 
Hallelujah. But he is an on-time God. And we bless him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank God for this worship experience. Hallelujah. For where there's two or three gathered together in his name. Hallelujah. He said that he's in the midst of us and we're glad about it. Hallelujah. We thank him for it. Come on, just clap your hands one more time and give him glory. Come, just give him praise wherever you are. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. A mighty God. And he alone is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And at this time, amen, we want you to receive, amen, our brother Gordon Francis as he come with a solo in Jesus' name. Glory unto God, amen. Praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I, I count it not robbery to lift my hands up in total gratitude to give God all the glory. For it is a privilege that we get to worship God. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to express the love that he has for us, that he's shown for us. Amen. And if you count it not as robbery, I invite you to lift your hands up, to worship God, to sing the song of praise with me. For the challenge is not, can I worship God? The challenge is, can we worship the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Oh uh-huh. 
hell is for me He loves like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight and wind Of his mercy When all of a sudden I was unaware Of these afflictions Eclipsed by your glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us so. And oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. And make it personal. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Me, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. And oh, Come on, 
are based in it. Hallelujah. He loves us. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank him for his love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He loves us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Come on, think about it. Come on. What you've done, glory. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, oh, how he loves us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how he loves. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We want you to continue to open up your heart. Open up your mind. Hallelujah. We rebuke the adversary. Hallelujah. We rebuke his assignment on today. And God, hallelujah, we ask that you have your way. Have your way, oh God. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. Hallelujah. As we present to you and introduce to you, hallelujah, our overseer, Eunice Dowling. Come on. Come on. We ask you to open up your heart as she come at this time. Come on, open up your heart, hallelujah, as we receive her in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands right where you're sitting, right in your homes. You may be on your job. Come on, lift your hands and worship the Lord. For he is worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. Come on, he's worthy of the glory. Higher, hallelujah. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh.
light up everything. God, we thank you for loving us, accepting us, saving us. We thank you, Lord, for taking us as your very own. We belong to you, God. Hey, God. We belong to you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we appreciate who you are in our lives. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For you are our healer. You are our deliverer. God, you are our everything. Our everything. And we appreciate you on this morning. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for what you're about to speak to us on today. Oh, God, send a word, God, to heal, God, send a word to meet a need, because we know, God, where there is a need, uh, there is a revelation. And, Lord, we thank you for revelation today. We thank you, God, for meeting every need. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. Come on, come on. Right from your belly, come on. Just thank you for loving you. Thank the Lord for loving you. Ah, because because he loves you, there is no fear. There is no doubt. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, how he loves. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, how he loves. We praise your name. for loving us. Thank you for accepting us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you excited that the Lord loves you? Hey, God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. There may be some people in your lives that ex that express to you how they feel and what they express didn't make you feel good because there's so many words they say they don't love you, they don't want you. But Jesus is standing with his arms wide open and he's saying, I love you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's saying with his arms wide open, I accept you. You belong to me. You are a... Uh, I am your creator. I am your savior. Oh, Lamb of God, and you are my child. Hallelujah. I need somebody to write in the comments and say, thank you, Lord, for loving me. See, I can speak on it because when I was a young girl, the enemy tried to tell me that life wasn't worth living. Uh, because in, this, in my mind, the enemy tried to deceive me to try to make me feel like no one loved me. Uh, but Jesus said, not only do I love you, but you got family right there that loves you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody said, glory be to God. So come on, let's lift our hands up again and say, Lord, I thank you for loving me. Hallelujah. And because he loves you, he has, he has the best out plan for you. Uh, his love protects you. His love strengthens you. His love covers a multitude of sins. His love covers you. Come on. Thank God for his love. Hallelujah. Now, just for a few moments. Amen. We're going to be reading at St. Mark's. And I want you to like and to share you that are in your homes, on your jobs. Hallelujah. Just for a few moments. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When I think of his love, I can't help but to cry. Hallelujah. Because, you know, society has put so many type of uh, stereotypes with us as a people, and they try to, you know, put all of these 
you know, stigmas, if you were born, if you were raised in a certain neighborhood, it, it, was, it was connected to some sort of stigma, praise God. But Jesus said, I love you. And no matter where you were born, and no matter where you live, I love you. Can any good come out of Nazareth? Don't look at where you came from. Don't look at where you at. Because I need somebody to turn to your neighbor in your house and say, this is only a temporary position. Uh, come on. I need somebody to turn to your neighbor and say, this is only a temporary situation. In other words, I'm going to move out of this house. I'm going to move out of this situation and God's going to cause me to walk into some new things. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. All right, St. Mark. Just for a few moments. See, when I just think about moving, I get, a, I get happy. <laughs> because God is a, a God of progression. God is always moving. Somebody said God is always moving. He's always moving. Thank God for his goodness. He's always moving. He's always moving. All right, let me read St. Mark number 2, chapter 2, chapter 2, the first verse. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door that he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And there was certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart. Why doeth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but, on, but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, why reason these things in your hearts? Whether it is easy, easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And number 12, and immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. And another scripture, amen, I have is Hebrews, glory be to God, 11, amen, and 1. Thank you, Lord. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And number 6, skip down. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen, amen. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. Again, I say praise the Lord to everyone. You that are on um, the phone, amen, the phone line, you that are watching, a few that are here, I want to say to you, amen, praise the Lord. Another week that the Lord has kept us, and we are glad. We are glad. We are glad that he kept us another day. And today I want to talk about, amen, praise the Lord. I want to talk about faith today. But if I take a topic today, it will be take off the roof. 
And my subtopic is faith in God. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. And today I, I just want to just, just uh, minister, amen, as the Lord give it to me, amen. When we look here at the word faith, we know that, amen, the hall of faith, which is in Hebrews uh, the 11th chapter, gives the best definition of faith. Because it starts off by saying, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then it goes on to say in the sixth verse, but for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. And when you look at Hebrews 11 chapter, you see the different testimonies of faith. Uh, and so when, when you get a chance, I want you to read Hebrews 11 because it will encourage you. It will let you know that faith works. And in order to please God, we got to have faith. Wait a minute. In order to walk this walk, we need faith. And I need somebody to write in the comments, we need faith. In other words, we must walk in faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let's look at uh, the first verse again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. When we look at the word hope, I go to Hebrews 6, 17 through 19. And it reads this way in the Amplified Version. It says, in the same way God in his desire to show to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable nature of his purpose intervened and guaranteed it with an oath. So that by these two changeable things, his promise and his oath, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to him for refuge would have strong encouragement and indwelling strength to hold tightly right, to the hope set before us. 19, this hope, this confident assurance, we have as an anchor of the soul, it cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. A safe and steadfast hope which enters within the veil of the heavenly temple. The most high, the most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells. So when we look at this hope, uh, when we look at the hope that the Bible talks about, it talks about the hope as our anchor. And it is said to be steadfast and sure. I want you to think about you on the boat, hallelujah, and you throw out your anchor. And your anchor is designed to hold you in that spot on the sea. Well, it's the same way with the hope that you have in God. Hallelujah. That hope we have, amen, when we believe in God, hallelujah, we throw out our anchor. Our anchor of hope knowing that, hallelujah, whatever we believe God for, he will bring it to pass. We know that faith initially, uh, our first experience of faith, brought us to salvation. Uh-huh. Why? Because the Bible said that we are saved by grace through faith. And that's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Hallelujah. We can't see it. Hallelujah. But it is faith that brought us to salvation. Some people call it saving faith. Mm -hmm. The faith that brought us to salvation and brought us to this hope. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Romans, hallelujah, it says, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So what is this hope? It is the hope uh, yeah, yeah, that God gives us as an anchor. It is, oh my God, it is designed, our hope is designed to be steadfast and sure. Why? Because 
God cannot lie. Hallelujah. And he, oh, my Lord, he walks in two unchangeable, my God, things. In other words, his promise is sure, and he made a promise that he will bring it to pass. So when you throw out your hope, you're throwing out the hope that God has given you in his word. You're throwing out an anchor. Somebody said an anchor. Mm -hmm. An anchor that will hold you until the blessing come. Mm -hmm. An anchor that will hold you until your miracle come. All right, somebody say glory. Turn to your neighbor and says, for now faith is a substance of things hoped for. My hope is based on the hope of God. My hope is based on, upon the changeable things of God. His promise will come to pass. Hallelujah. Whatever he say will come to pass. And it is impossible for God to lie. So my hope is in the God that cannot lie. My hope is in the God that will bring it to pass. Somebody say hallelujah. And the Bible said evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. We may not, tie your glory be to God, see things coming together. But faith tells us, hallelujah, hallelujah, faith tells us, our hope tells us, hallelujah, that the evidence is not there, hallelujah, but our hope tells us it's coming to pass. Why? Because God cannot lie. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. He is unchangeable when it comes to his promise and when it comes to what he promised. I'm going to say that again. He is unchangeable when it comes to his promise and what he promised you. So in other words, when you read in the word and you see the promises of God, you have hope in it. But I'm going to encourage you today that you can have hope in the promise that God has promised you. In other words, when the trials come and when temptation come, the Bible says in James, hallelujah, the first chapter, it says, count it all joy. When you fall and dive is temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. What I'm saying today is your hope is in God. Our hope is in God. And when we fall into divers temptation, and when we go through some trials, it is a working. Everybody said to try him. It is a trying of your faith that work it patience. But it says, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. You come to the place of wanting nothing. You come to the place of wanting nothing. I, I think of uh, uh, David that says, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. What David said, my hope is in God. And because of that, I don't have to want for anything because whatever I, whatever I need, God will give it. And I'm telling you today, amen, people of God, amen, that your faith will be tried. But know that when your hope is in God and when you trust the word of God, you shall come to the place of wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Faith is believing when you don't see it working together. Faith is believing, hallelujah, when, when everything seems like it's coming against you. Will you still have faith? Will you still have faith? Well, that's what faith is. Faith is believing and hoping in the, the word of God. Your hope is lined up with the word of God to the point where when the trouble comes, you still believe. When sickness comes, you still believe. Come on now, somebody say hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up right where you're sitting and just say hallelujah. So there is a faith that the Lord wants us to walk in. And when we first accepted Christ, God has given all men a measure of faith. But as you walk with God, your faith grows. Okay? It grows. Somebody said it grows. I need somebody to write in the comments, your faith grows. 
In other words, you don't stay. I'm not at the place where I was when I first got saved. Why? Because I walked with God and, and, and I've seen some things and I've experienced some things that have increased my faith. Oh, my, my, how ya? hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. And I'm still telling the Lord today, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase. Why? Because there is the, the next level, I know for a fact, there will be another uh, uh, opportunity. And there will be an opportunity, rather, that will present itself that would need, I would need to have greater faith. In other words, I'm not trying to stay where I'm at. I'm trying to go higher. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, higher in faith. Come on, write in the comments. Write in your home. If you don't have no one there, just look up and say, greater faith. And so faith is a tool that we can't live without. We cannot move without faith. We must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek. Everybody write, I must believe. You may say, well, my mother believed God and she was a prayer warrior. Or my mother believes God and she is a prayer warrior. My father believed or believed God and he was or he is a prayer warrior. But I'm here to ask you a question today. Do you believe? Do you believe what you testify about? Do you believe what you talk about? You proclaim you are a Christian and a woman or man of God, but do you truly believe the word of God? God is calling for faith. God is calling for us as believers to walk in another level of faith to the point that we become radical to the point where we do, we, we deviate from the norm and do something that's out of the ordinary. We are living in a time that nothing is happening according to our norm. Years ago, we used to say, well, America norm is not China norm. And India norm is not Africa norm. And in social where we say, my norm may not be your norm. But what happened here in this world has become a norm <laughs> for all of the countries. In our country, it has become a norm of COVID-19. Somebody say hallelujah. Uh-huh. It has become, a no in other words, we all have something in common. All have something in common. Not that sickness was in other countries, but right now we can all relate to COVID-19. We can all relate to the shutdown. We can all relate to job loss. Even, okay, let's come home. Even right here in our city, we all can relate to this pandemic. Somebody said, glory be to God. We can all relate. But I ask a question again today. Do you believe? Do you believe the word of God? Do you believe? Because we can't say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. This pandemic is hitting me hard. It hit everybody hard. The question is, do you believe? You may say, well, that's happening in Africa. They falling, you know, they, they, uh, they're leaving here. But it's the same thing happened here in America. Do you believe? Do you believe what God says? I heard Elder just say in the, in the audience here, he said the test is here. But the Lord says you, we must believe that what? He is. That he is, he is the healer, that he is, he is the deliverer, that he is the breakthrough, he is the miracle. Do you believe that he is? 
to the point where you'll do something uncommon. Why? Because we live it in an unprecedented time. And God is calling for unprecedented faith. <laughs> he's looking for a faith, hallelujah, that even when the enemy is at your door, he's looking for you to rush through the door with faith, calling on his name and believe it. Not running scared and hiding. Hallelujah. God don't want us to run and hide. God wants us to stand up, hallelujah, and walk and face the enemy. He wants us to face what the enemy is trying to do to bring us down, to bring us, hallelujah, to a place of not believing. Everybody said faith. So this brings us to our text. We are going to show you how these men... And I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. Brought this sick man to the Lord. Now watch this. It happened on a, a day where Jesus was teaching in a crowded house. It was crowded. You know, everybody was trying to get to hear the word. And it was common for People, you know, that were in need to be curious. I would say it's common now. Because if I'm in need, I'm running to Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and just write in the comments say, run to Jesus. And so they knew that he had the power to heal. And all they wanted to do is be at his feet. They wanted to be in his presence. But there were four men that realized that their friend was sick. He was lame. He was in the bed. He could not walk. So because he could not walk, they said, well, he can't get to Jesus by walking. We will take him by the bed. We will take, take the bed to Jesus. I love that because what it tells us is that we can bring our problems to Jesus. Yes, we can. We can bring whatever we're going through to Jesus. So they did not ignore the opportunity to bring Jesus, to bring their friend to Jesus. They had to do something. They had to think quick. They had to, uh, you know, strategize. They had to come up with an idea that will bring this sick man to Jesus. And I want to say that that was their faith because they all agreed to move his bed to Jesus. What can happen when people come together and believe, hallelujah, and, and really move in agreement? It's amazing what can be done. And the Bible says that they took him up to the roof. And then when they took him there, they became radical and they said, wait a minute, we can't get to the door. We can't get through the door. What we'll do, we'll take them on the roof. One writer says that the roof was made of hard clay. Another writer said maybe leaves, bark, and dirt. But the point is, they had to do some work to get to Jesus. Uh, they had to do some work. And so the Bible says that because of their faith, and their faith moving in agreement, God showed himself strong. First of all, he gave them strength to dig. They had to dig through the roof. Can you imagine that? They all agreed to dig. So I'll go on to say this. They all agreed to believe. They all agreed to believe, to believe God for their friend. And they said, my friend, our friend will be healed. If we get the bed to Jesus, it's over. <laughs> Once we get the bed to Jesus, it's over. You know how it is. We, we, we use that cliche when we say, oh, God, if once sister so-and-so come in or once brother, it's going to be over. Once they take the stage, it's over. 
Once they sing that song, it's over. Once they cook the food, it's over. Well, I come to tell you that once Jesus show up, it's over. <laughs> Somebody said it's over. Come on, write in the comments and say it's over. And that's why we got to get to Jesus. Because Jesus makes all the difference. Because what, one thing about Jesus, when he shows up, he show up loaded. When he shows up, he show up with a blessing. When he shows up, he shows up with a miracle. Somebody said miracle. All right, all right. Let, just, let me just give you a few more points. We not told much about these men that dig the roof. Dig and chop a hole in it. Hallelujah. Somebody said breakthrough. But we do know that they agreed and Brother Gordon, they were bold enough to climb and to dig. They were bold enough to climb and to dig. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they knew that once they get him to Jesus, he'll be healed. Now let me talk, tell you about the power of agreement. They recognize the power of agreement that if they come together in faith, hallelujah, and if they pray, if they do whatever that needs to be done, it will multiply their gain to get victory. Uh, Sister uh, Minister Braswell is like a simple spiritual mathematics. One plus one equal two. One plus one equal two. Two equal victory. In other words, hallelujah, they recognize that if we come together and bring him down to Jesus, we all going to get victory. Number one, we're going to get victory because we had the faith to, sh oh my God, to bring him to Jesus. And number two, our friend will be healed and no longer will he have to uh, be in their house, but he can walk along with us. And many times, God will use us as believers to come together and believe together. Turn to your name and say, it's not all about you. Write in the comments and say, it's not all about you. Sometimes God's going to bring us together so we can believe together. What is wrong with us that we can't believe together? You want a property, you want this, you desire to expand, you desire to change the community to some, in some degree, some form, hallelujah, where young people are uh, 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 impacted and I can't come together with you and pray and believe. You see, there is a spirit of selfishness in the kingdom of God. But let me just say this, when you walk in the kingdom, you don't have that spirit like, oh my, when you're praying, when you're talking to God, you don't have that spirit of selfishness. But this is what you have. You feel if I got bread, you got a piece of it. If I got victory, I want you to have a piece. Come on. I want you to have victory too. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is calling us as believers to believe. God is calling us as believers to take the roof off. All right. I need somebody to write in the comments and say, somebody needs us. We spend a lot of time crying about our problems. Right. This, is not, this is not what I plan, but this is what the Lord is giving me. We spend a lot of times crying about our problems. problems. All right. And the Lord said, I just want you to get with Galloway. Mm -hmm. I want you to get with Oliver Dowling. I need you to get with uh, Brother Kenneth. And I need you to touch and agree because your sister right there needs a healing. Right. And if you all are coming to agree and do something radical, uh, I mean, turn down your plate, touch and agree, and walk in the faith. Not only will your sister get healed, but everything you are in need of, God say, I'll answer. Watch this. Don't you know that there were so many blessings that God brought in our lives? It wasn't because we just prayed for ourselves. It's because we prayed for somebody else. So turn to your neighbor and just say, raise the roof. Take off the roof. All right, so let me, let me go on, okay? So they were digging. 
they were digging. And what we look here is we see agreement and we see determination. What was their determination? What did, what did it look like? Well, there was natural barriers that confronted the friends of this, this sick man. But his friends did not deny this opportunity. Uh-huh. It was an act of determination. And what it did, it just demonstrated the love that they have for their brother. Uh, somebody said hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. They, 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 they lived out hallelujah where it says in John 6 and 38, they says, for I come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me. A new commandment I give to you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye love one another. By this all you all will know uh, that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So here the Lord is saying they lived it out. They lived out the love. That they didn't want to see their friends suffer no longer. And they came together and they said, we're going to take off the roof. Yes. Their they determination became unstoppable. Now, what, now let me ask you this. What crowd is standing in your way? What does your crowd look like? that's standing in your way that you can't get in. But I hear God saying you got to go beyond the crowd. Your crowd may represent some people that disagree with you. Your crowd may represent the systems that, that seem like coming against you. Your crowd may represent your own issues within your family. But whatever the crowd is that's stopping you from getting to Jesus, you ask God, God, give me another way. In other words, Lord, show me. Mm. Show me, God, how to go above the crowd, where the crowd doesn't distract me, where the crowd doesn't stop me, where the crowd doesn't hold me back. Because I'm here to tell you there is another way to Jesus. You're trying to get through people, and the Lord said, you don't have to come through people to get to me. All you need to do is call on my name, and I'm here. I'll be wherever you call me, oh, my Lord. If you just call on my name, I'll be wherever you call me. Oh, my Lord. Somebody said hallelujah. So they had unstoppable determination. Unstoppable determination. They said, we are determined to get him to Jesus. We going up and over the crowd. We got to learn how to go up and over. <laughs> Hallelujah. And see, when we go up, that means we going higher. Uh-huh. And we coming over. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. And now we are in a position where we can get to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because now the crowd that was distracting us is no longer there. Because we have lifted ourselves higher and we've come over. Somebody say hallelujah. All right. Let me just, let me just uh, move on. I'm holding you too long. <laughs> they had unstoppable determination. I hear you, minister. Unstoppable determination. There is great power when your faith moves with unstoppable determination. <laughs> somebody said unstoppable. I need somebody to write that. Unstoppable determination. Hallelujah. They would have not taken him to Christ, Galloway, if they did not believe he could be healed. Anytime we come to Jesus, it's because we believe. Anytime we become unstoppable, it's because we believe. The reason why you're so determined, because you know he can do it. The reason why you're so persuaded, because you know he can. Oh, my God. You know he can do it, so that's why you're unstoppable. Hallelujah. You know that you're unstoppable. But... When you are unstoppable, there will always be an opposition. Opposition will come up to try your faith. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let me go back to determination for a minute. Bible says in James 2 and 18, 
He says, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my. It wasn't enough for them to say, I believe that my friend will be healed. They had to do something. He says, I will show you my faith by my determination. I will show you my faith by my works. We got to put the effort in. We have to put the works in. And when they were digging the roof, uh, and when they were pulling up every towel, they were saying we're un unstoppable. Mm. They were saying, look at our works. We don't just talk it, but we act on it. We act on it. The Lord is calling us to act on our faith. Faith without works is Faith without works is dead. Dead. But don't let the opposition get you down. They would not be stopped. They said, now this is the part I love. When I was reading and I was just studying the other day, last night, they said they made room for him through the power of their faith. Watch this. Sometimes the enemy wants to crowd the space so your faith don't have room to work. <laughs> but they said, no, we're going to make room for him through the power of our faith. So down through the hole in the roof, he went right to the feet of Jesus. They said we will not be denied. Why? Because we have that radical roof removing faith. Many people are successful today because they didn't think according to the norm. The reason why many have, uh, have obtained properties and able to change the world is because they didn't think according to the norm. They did not even allow society to dictate how far they should go. And they did not allow what was said about them and their culture to stop them. See, you know what happens? When you allow people to define you, then they can limit you and they can tell you how far you can go. But in order for you to, to, to take off the roof, you can't think like what people are giving you. In other words, you can't accept what people are giving you. You can't accept what people are saying about you. You have to do something different. And faith will cause you to do something different. That's the bottom line. That's what faith is. Faith will say, <laughs> faith will say jump out there. And you'll be like, what? Jump where? And the faith be saying, out there. And you be like, no, uh. And faith said, no, you have to jump. Because when you jump out there, I'm going to cause you to walk on the water. When you jump out there, I'm going to have a resource waiting for you. But I need you to move. And you're not going to move in the norm. You're not going to move like everybody else. You're not going to move when everything is good. You're going to move when there is nothing out there. Why? Because God, God works in the nothing. When there's nothing, you, it shows in creation, there was nothing. And God, blew, oh my God, he spoke the word and spoke and, and, and declared the sun in space and in place and declared the moon in place. And he said, let there be light. So the Lord said, don't look at the zero when there's nothing, because I am the Lord thy God that give you power to speak into nothing and cause it to be something. What is faith? How, you know, when they dug into the roof, Gordon, and when they dug into the roof, that was faith. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
When, some, when the Lord told somebody to open up a business, they, they didn't even have a loan. Or they didn't even have a, approval of a loan. But the Lord said, go get the building. Go do this. And, and God spoke, and God gave them resources. I've seen it happen. I know what I'm talking about. Somebody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. But watch this. Could you imagine while they were tearing the roof, dust was falling and debris on the heads of those that were in the room? Oh, it must have been chaotic. Oh, they were looking and saying, what in the world is this? Why they couldn't come through the door? Why? Because their faith told them to go up and over. In other words, their faith says, I can't get to the door. I can't get through the door. So because I can't get through the door, I'm going to do something different. I need somebody to write that in the comments. I'm going to do something See, some of us are trying to uh, follow everybody else's path. But Elder Dallin's path to his, his results may not be the path for you. So can you imagine they were looking up? People probably got stuff all over their clothes from the roof. And they looked at it as an inter interruption. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus was not surprised by the man coming down. Because he understood that it was a divine opportunity arranged by his God that can lead into a healing and deliverance. Watch this. I want to say something. I got to get, I got to get out of here. An interruption. That we consider an interruption is actually a divinely ordered opportunity. So Jesus said, this is a divine ordered opportunity opportunity <laughs> it's not an interruption so what my point is that sometimes people may want to look at your your leap of faith as an interruption and they may say you interrupted my lifestyle you interrupted my space you interrupting the way we did it uh-uh no I ain't interrupted I'm walking in divine divinely ordered opportunity uh, because the Lord said, in order for me to do something and to receive something, I got to do something different. Mm, I got to take off the roof. Uh, you may not ever try it, but the Lord told me, I got to take it off. I got to go down. I got to go past the crowd. Hallelujah. I got to go past everything that try to uh, stop me. I got to go past everything that try to hold me back. Watch this. I got to go past my past. They try to tell me I'm not good enough. My past, my past, my past sins, my past lifestyle, my past addictions, my past, my past, my past. I got to go past my past. Some of us, that's what the crowd look like in us, in our lives. Our past is standing like a crowd. And everybody in that crowd got a little sign on them. You were a liar. You were, you were addicted. You this, you made a mistake. You thought the wrong thoughts. But I'm saying get past your past. <laughs> I need somebody to write in the comments, get past your past. Because the Bible says, wait, wait, wait. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become so when the crowd of your past comes, declare the scripture and tell the devil, devil, you are a liar. Everything that was in my past are past. Old things are passed away. And behold, old things become new. So let me get to the, let me get to the part. Interruption. But it was actually a divinely ordered opportunity. Jesus was not surprised. And can I say this? Jesus is not surprised when you do something different. He's looking and expecting you to do something different. He's looking to see if you're going to step out on the water. He's looking to see if you're going to sign the paper, but yet you don't know what's on the other side. <laughs> okay. I know some of you can testify to that. I know. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I I know some of you that are watching me, you can testify, say, you, you're right, Pastor. When I signed that, that paper, I didn't know what was behind, but I believed God because I knew it was time for me to do something. All right, this is it. 
when Jesus saw the man, what he saw of Evangelist Galloway was the active faith of these men, springing from confidence in him. And he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sin be forgiven. Now you may be saying, well, why he just didn't say, rise up and walk first? Because he realized the problem was not in the walking. Now, the problem was in his soul. He said, if I get his soul right, if I get his thinking right, if I get him to see him as being cleansed, and then everything, when he rise up and walk, he gonna walk new. You see, some of us, we want to get healed. Some of us want the miracle, but we don't want to live right. We don't want, and that's why the past become the crowd. And that's why we can't move past our issues because we're trying to get to Jesus, but we're not trying to accept Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and write in the comments, some people are trying to get to Jesus, but not trying to accept Jesus. You trying to get to me, but you ain't trying to accept me. And I think all of us can relate to that. If you ever been in a relationship, I'm sure you've been in some before you got married, or you're still single, they were trying to get to you, they were trying to take from you, but they weren't trying to accept you. Don't let me go there. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, it's the same way with Jesus. I'm closing. He said, no, I have the power to forgive. Oh, he was criticized. But I see this, I see this this way. He said, I got to forgive the man. Because when he get up and pick up his mat and walk, I want him to do something different. And when he pick up his mat, his mat represents his past. And his past is going to let him know, you over it now. Mm -hmm. his, um, that mat is going to let him know, uh, you can't hold me down anymore. But he, he said, I got to tell him he is forgiven first. I got to tell him it's over. I got to tell him he is a new creature. And then once he rise up and walk, he's going to walk with a confidence. He's going to walk knowing that God is able. He's going to walk, oh my God, doing the different. He's going to walk knowing how to go past the crowd. But I need to tell him, hey God, that he's forgiven. I hear the Lord saying, I'm removing all guilt. I'm removing all penalty. And I assign righteousness to your life. I need you to accept me. Not just what I can do, but accept me as Lord. He said, because when you rise up and walk, and you take up that mat that was holding you, that mat will no longer have power over you. And you'll be able to talk to the mat and say, uh-huh, I used to, you used to, I used to, but I'm no longer that way. And Jesus said, I must forgive first. I must, but I must let him know that he is forgiven. They took off the roof, not just for him to be healed, but for him to be saved. So that he could be sick no longer. What was really holding him down? Was it his past? What was causing him not to be able to walk? Was it the sins? Was it something that's holding? You know, many of us are not moving because something else is holding us. We're walking, we're talking, but we're not moving. We're not progressing. What is it? I hear the Lord say, he remove all guilt, all penalty. Your sins are forgiven. Take up your bed and walk. Saints of God, in my closing, we got to take off the roof. In other words, we got to do something different. Go past the crowd. There's a crowd that have a lot of noise that's out there. The crowd of fear. They, they, they're constantly talking fear. The crowd of want. Go past it. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I believe your word. Lord, I believe your word. Come on, write it in the comments. Lord, I believe your word. 
Hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord today, I just went through what Jesus said in his word. He's there. He's waiting with his arms open to accept you. He wants you to accept him. Don't worry about your miracle and your breakthrough and all of that you need. The Lord said, if you accept me, when I give unto you, you'll be able to appreciate and you will see it through a different lens because I will shift your perspective and your perception of who you are. Don't you want that? Don't you want that relationship with the Lord that you'll be able to go up and go over the crowd that try to block you from getting to Jesus, that try to prevent you from moving in God? Because it's not just you getting saved, it's you doing kingdom work, progressing in the kingdom to the point where everywhere you go, they can't deny the goodness of God on your life. So if you don't know him, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I believe you died for me. I believe, hallelujah, you was resurrected for me. Come into my life, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for saving me, for cleansing me, in Jesus' name. And you that receive Christ, go to our website, Faith Tabernacle, and let us know that you have received the Lord. Give us your information where we can come contact you and send you, amen, information that will be helpful and that will minister to your heart. Hallelujah. You that's on the line, hallelujah. You want to write your comments, your prayer requests in the comments, you can. God, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. We want to agree with you today. Remember I talked about if we would just come together and believe together? We want, we want to do that today as you write in, your com in the comments. We want to be able to believe. So, Minister, can you bring me your phone real quick? I just want to call out a few prayer requests because I want to believe with you today. I want to be like four men. That we come together and we agree with you. Hallelujah. God, I pray and I ask every believer to pray with me. Lord, I pray for Shakima. Lord, I pray for her children. I pray for the Brown family, the Wiggins family. Lord, you know what they're in need of on today, God. And God, I ask you, oh, fire, hallelujah. Lord, as we touch and agree, God, we believe you, God, for their lives. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Palmer. We, we pray favor, uncommon favor. Favor for the Palmer family. We pray for Tiffany. Jamal and Lorenzo, healing of the body. We pray for Diane, healing up for herself, oh God. And for Nandi, Lord, we thank you for Shalanda. Peace with her, on a job. Oh, my, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we pray for Chandra. We pray for the Haynes family. We pray for healing and breakthrough. Pray for Belinda, hey God. Lord, we thank you for Mother Sylvia. We thank you for Sister Audrey. Hey, Eva Basha. Oh, God, we still believe God. Hey, God. God, we pray for Venus. Lord, we pray for greater faith. Lord, strengthen her right now. In the name of God, we pray for Dr. Johnson. Healing for her niece. Oh, God. We pray for her niece today. We pray for the healing of her body. We pray for Dr. Johnson as she walk into doors that she had not imagined. 
God, we pray for Rolanda Powell. We thank you for healing. And God, we agree and we believe for a new residence. Lord, she belongs to you. Oh God, we pray for Lorraine Williams. Mother Williams, God, we pray that her life, that she will walk in good health. Oh God, we ask you to strengthen her family. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Abigail, Mercer. God, we pray for her and her family, her children. Lord, I ask you to shield Abigail, shield her daughter, shield her son. Mother Bess, we thank you, God, for the healing of her body. Oh, God, we pray for Mother Braswell. God, we thank you for her greater faith, greater faith, greater faith. Kenny, Kenny Jr., healing body, God. I ask you, God, to perform a special miracle in his life. Hey, Ibaba Shah. Lord, he's given his, his life to you. Oh, God. Lord, I know you can. Lord, pray for Mother Best family. Lord, we pray for her. We pray for Sister Tawana. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for direction. We thank you for her family. Lord, we pray for Lenise. Oh, God, we pray for Sharice. Oh, God, in the Powell family, Lord, we thank you for her life. I thank you for what you showed me about her. I thank you, God, for what she will become. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for Mother Ferguson. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the Sims family. We pray, hallelujah, hallelujah for the Rose family in the Rose. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you. We praise you. God, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Come on, did you believe God with me? Come on. Come on, did you, did you pray while I pray for our sister and for our brother? Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's praise. Remember, I said before, we're going to pray and we're going to praise. Hallelujah. So come on, let's praise them. Let's praise them. Hallelujah. 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 God, we pray for Ebony family, the Thomas family, the Ferguson family. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Michelle family. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Say some God, stay encouraged. Know that the Lord is with you. Please keep me in your prayers. And I want to say this, hallelujah. I want to say thank you for praying for us. Continue to uphold us in prayer. Continue to believe God. Be that friend. Be that friend that would take off the roof. Hallelujah. If it means my miracle, if it means Latoya miracle, if it means Elder Dallin miracle, Woo. be that friend to yes. take off the roof. Glory. And I guarantee you, when you take off the roof for somebody else, when you believe God for somebody else, yes. God said he's going to answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, God, we pray for Danielle. The open doors, open doors, yes. open doors, open doors. Open doors. Oh, God, we pray for Palestine and Israel. We pray for those countries. We pray for peace in the name of Jesus. And God, we love you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. God bless you, saints of God. Stay encouraged. Hallelujah. We'll see you next week. If you want to sow, feel free. 73256 FBT. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you next week. God bless.